Welcome to the full story series right here at Comic Storian. Today we're going to be telling you the six issue storyline Deadpool Secret Agent. Now basically what happened is we took each of these individual issues and we created individual episodes for them all. And the story that is going to be told is a story of Deadpool becoming a secret agent just like James Bond. A bit of a shorter full story, but there are still some Deadpool fans here on the channel and we don't want you to feel forgotten. So let's go ahead and get started. Our story begins on a long stretch of highway in Death's Plains, New Mexico, where a robbery had just taken place. The robbery of Copples the Horse. The thief laughs to himself about how much money he's about to make when he hears knocking at the window. He looks over to see Deadpool, who's riding alongside the speeding semi, introducing himself by shooting the thief in the head. Realizing the truck is now about to swerve off the road, Deadpool makes a heroic leap from his trusty steed, whom may or may not have been stolen, and he climbs into the cab. Copples begins to scream, and Deadpool asks, Why are you doing that? Don't be scared, Deadpool is here too! Deadpool then looks forward to see what Copples is screaming about, and he agrees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty scary, huh? The semi launches itself off the side of the mountain, and it gets hung up on a dead branch, narrowly saving the two from a horrible death. Deadpool reaches out for Copples, telling him, We don't have time to enjoy the respite from a deadly fall, so let's just get out of here so that we can... But before he can finish his sentence, he hears whoop, 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 whoop of a helicopter getting close. Just then, the passenger side door is ripped off, and a man with half of a stone face tells him, It would seem that nobody can be trusted with the safety of my sweet little creature. Deadpool shouts asking, What the hell? Where did you come from? And what is with your face? Also, that's not your horse. The man takes Copples, telling him, No. This horse is now my employer's. I represent a different party. Not that that will matter very soon. Deadpool tells him, Maybe so, but understand one thing. While I'm wily coyoteing to the bottom of this valley, I will hate you forever! Soon the branch snaps and the truck crashes into the bottom of the valley in a blaze of glory. Deadpool pulls himself out, muttering to himself, Stupid horse! Stupid truck! Stupid half-statue face, vaguely European horse thief guy! Stupid all-consuming craving for vengeance that's going to take up a lot of my time until I'm dead. Stupid fire. So later, after getting a call for a hit, Deadpool makes his way to the Redwood Resort and Casino in Northern California. His target? The handsome Burns. Jace Burns, who happens to sleep with some other dude's wife. While Jace wins another hand at poker, a beautiful woman with red hair is watching. She says that she wishes that she could play like that. Her game is just dreadful. Jace tells her that he would be happy to be a tutor for her. Perhaps they could have a private lesson later in his room? Sweet. 809 class begins in an hour. The woman walks off stating that she'll see him soon then. And a few moments later, she says that he's in room 809. Deadpool reaches down to give the woman her payment, telling her, Excellent work. Now, if you'll excuse me. The woman looks at the paper, stating that it's only a coupon for the buffet. And Deadpool jumps off into the shadows, yelling, Times are tight! Thanks again! As an hour goes by, Deadpool is aiming his rifle in at room 809, waiting for Jace, wondering how many people have done the Simpsons impression of the guy. Ha! <laughs> Mr. Burns. Just then, Jace walks into the room, and as Deadpool squeezes the trigger, Jace spins around in super-secret agent fashion and fires. Deadpool's head snaps back, and he shouts, What the hell? You shot me in the eye? He rides down on a vine, leaping into the suite with his knife, which Jace easily counters. Jace disarms Deadpool, asking, Who sent you? Deadpool headbutts him, telling him it was someone who was very upset with his wife's affair choices. Jay stumbles back as he checks his watch, and Deadpool's shocked. Really? The lady ain't coming, man! Jace laughs, <laughs> no, no, I figured that. I was just setting up for this! Just then, as Jace holds his arm out, several micro-missiles shoot out of the watch, and as Deadpool's body is blown away, he realizes that he is, in fact, fighting a secret agent and not getting paid enough for this. He lunges, ripping Jace's sleeve and watch off, and Jace quickly yells, Be careful with that! One wrong input and... But before he could finish, the entire resort explodes, sending it crashing into the ground. As debris begins to fall all around them, Deadpool looks at the watch, telling himself, That's a pretty complicated piece of equipment to just have controls that basically wind this way or wind that way. Deadpool then gets up to check Jace's pocket for some gas money when he finds two pictures. One, the half-statue-faced man, and then another is a woman who looks sort of familiar. Deadpool starts to shake Jace's body, yelling, This is a pretty big coincidence! Who are you? Who? Who? And Deadpool shouts as he inhales some of the smoke and passes out. A little while later, Deadpool wakes up to the sounds of three people talking around him. He leans up in a hospital bed, seeing a woman, an old man, and a somewhat fat guy all staring at him. The older man tells him, Welcome back. 
We thought we were going to lose you back there. The fat man tells him, You took one hell of a beating back there. Good thing you have a GPS tracker in the watch or we wouldn't have been able to evacuate you from the fire. You'll also be happy to know that the assassin with you is just a pile of ash and bones now. The woman throws her arms around Deadpool yelling, Oh, Jace Burns, I'm so happy that you're alive. Deadpool pauses for a moment. Uh... Burns? The woman steps back asking if it's possible that he was burned into amnesia. And the old man says that it must have been traumatic, Miss Shortbread. Just look at his skin. We need to run a few exams is all. Deadpool gets up asking, wait, what exams? Where am I? Shortbread tells him that he's back home. Someone hired an assassin to take him out. And the fat man says that he's very impressed that he even survived. He should get dressed so that they can get the evaluation over with and look at some new tech that they've been working on. As everyone leaves Deadpool, Deadpool tells himself, They must think I'm Jace. Wonder if they know anything about the man with the half-statue face that stole the horse. Deadpool calls out asking what intel they have on the man with the half-stone face. And Shortbread asks, Vladika Polyak? Just a few leads. Deadpool puts on his suit, adjusting to cuffs. And he says, Burns. Jace Burns. But while the fat man begins his examination elsewhere, somebody receives the message. Burns alive, assassin dead. And the person on the other end pets Copples, stating that it would seem that Agent Burns is alive. Now we're gonna have to make a better attempt, won't we, Copples? The next day, after deeming him fit for active duty, Deadpool is sent to Death Skate Island to stop General Trul Mabak from activating a portal that would allow him to transport armies all across the world in seconds. But before he can make sure that it works properly, he must first complete a test by throwing a helpless woman into it, especially now that Jace Burns is out of the picture. Deadpool flies down on his jetpack, kicking Troll Mew over the ledge, telling him, Give my regards to Broadway! The helpless woman runs over, giving Deadpool dozens of kisses, and then she sees his face sagging a bit. She asks if everything's okay, and Deadpool tells her, It's fine! Don't worry about it, ma'am. And a short while later, on the getaway boat, Deadpool looks at himself in the mirror and he goes over his current situation. You see, he was hired to kill Jace Burns for sleeping with some guy's wife, but what ended up happening was that Jace Burns was killed in Jace's spy club, the Risk Management Agency, thought that he was Jace after being pulled out of a fire. So by the rules of Tim Allen's Santa Claus, he is now the super secret agent Jace Burns. With the help of the agency's special face mask technology, he can look just like Jace did before the fire. Maybe this killing Jace and replacing him thing isn't such a bad thing. But before he could finish his thought, the helpless woman, Christina, screams. Deadpool rushes over to see what's the matter, only to find Christina turned to stone and General Chul Mu's Death Gate Island blowing up. Deadpool speeds off, calling RMA's impossibility designer in Resident Imp, AKA the fat guy from before, asking what the hell? Somebody just blew up the island and turned his plus one into a statue. Imp tells him that that is a problem. Also, he should probably hit the button before speeding off and crashing into the island. Deadpool begins to smack all the buttons on the control panel when a small mini fridge with blood packs pop up. Deadpool asks, what is that? And Imp tells him that it's some of his blood in case he ever gets poisoned or gravely wounded in the field. And Deadpool tells him, right, gross. Which one was the button again? Imp sighs, ah, it's the only red button glowing. So Deadpool presses that, and the large yacht transforms into a slim sports car. Deadpool says that that is a lot of boat to cram into a small thing. Nice. Now later, Deadpool returns to Washington, D.C. to the RMA to debrief ARC Director Blank, a.k.a. the old man. Blank asks if they know who might have done this, and Deadpool tells him, No, but I'm guessing it's the same person who turned my girlfriend into stone. Blank then shouts, asking, Polyak then? That can't be a coincidence. I need to make some calls, so your debrief will have to wait until later, Jace. Just then, Imp sticks Deadpool with a needle, yelling, Gotcha! Deadpool asks him, What was that for? And Imp tells him that they need to run some lab stuff, standard procedure stuff. Imp tosses the small vial of blood to a lab assistant, telling them to run a full scan. They have to take this stuff very seriously. What if he was a metahuman impersonating Jace? What if he was a Skrull? Deadpool nervously laughs. <laughs> yeah, what could be worse? So Imp leaves and Deadpool heads down to the yacht car, stating that it was fun while it lasted. Once they find out who he is, the jig is going to be up. At least you'll be able to keep the car and... But as Deadpool presses several buttons to try and start the car, the fridge of blood pops up again, giving him an idea. He takes the blood packs, getting ready to head back up when the security guards stop him, telling him, I heard you're opening a new bodega in town. Deadpool says that he doesn't know the passphrase. Is it, I hope we don't get a cat that pees all over the place? The guards' arms spring out dozens of knives and they begin to shout, intruder alert, intruder alert. 
As Deadpool fights off the guards, Imp radios into the microphone to one of the guards asking if everything's okay. Does he need to come down? Deadpool rips the arm off of one of the guards, telling him, no, these guys are uh, just falling apart down here. He then knocks out the last guard bot, telling him, it's no big deal, everything's fine, no need to. But that's when Deadpool notices that during the fight, his arm was cut off. He grabs it, rushing into the lab to swap the blood out, but after switching the vials, he begins to reattach his arm. He wiggles his arm, realizing that it now works again, but Imp then asks, did you just reattach your arm? Who are you? A few seconds later, and encased in super thick foam, Deadpool says that he just wants him to know that there's nothing to be upset about here. Imp scoots back, yelling at him that he just tried to kill him. And Deadpool says, yes, because I was afraid, not angry. There's a difference. Anyway, before the others can arrive, he just wants to say thanks. The murder work is fun and all, but the car, the jetpack, the boat that is a car, the car that is a boat, or whatever it is, thank you. Imp begins to laugh, and Deadpool asks him what's so funny. And Imp tells him because Burns never thanked him for anything. Just then, security rushes in asking if everything's okay. And Imp says, take this man out of the faulty security foam. We got a meeting to get to. So a short while later, Deadpool and Imp go into Blank's office where Blank explains that they just got confirmation that there has been an attack on an Antarctic research facility known as Project Pinniped. Whatever the scientists were working on, it left their attackers mindless. They have no idea what it is. In fact, there was no information about these scientists until this morning. They do, however, know who the attackers are. Vladika Polecki. Deadpool yells, hey, that's the guy I want to kill. And Blank tells him then he might get his chance. It would seem that based on the information that they have and the last companion turning to stone, their rival agency, Gorgon, has reemerged. He himself has thought to have destroyed Gorgon back in his Asian days, but obviously that was not the case. He did not succeed. Intel revealed that Dr. Dipson, the head researcher of Pinnipad, escaped the Gorgon attack. Because as it is in Antarctica, Dipson's travel options are limited, they must recover him before Gorgon does. Deadpool goes to get outfitted and Imp holds out a pill telling him that he'll be using this to travel across the snow. He tosses the pill and out pops a full-sized snowmobile. He then hands Deadpool a pack of those pills and he points to the top right one that tells him, this is the one, don't eat it. While Shortbread is distracting Imp with the mission details, Deadpool gets a handful of the snowmobile pills. Shortbread then tells Deadpool that he's going to have to be careful with this one. And Deadpool suggests, why doesn't she just come along with him? She says that she's just a coordinator. She doesn't. And a short while later, Deadpool and Shortbread are jumping out of a plane and Shortbread yells, this is so much better than scheduling airdrops. Once on the train, Deadpool and Shortbread sit in the dining car to try and locate Dr. Dipson. Deadpool orders drinks from a woman who looks vaguely familiar, and as he takes a sip, he feels his throat beginning to close up. Shortbread shouts that he's choking, and the woman's server tells him that that's right, she poisoned him. As Deadpool falls over, the woman takes off Deadpool's watch, stating that this is for the money he took from her back at the casino. Does he remember? She wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Surely that game of poker was all a part of his investigation into Gorgon. Deadpool pulls off his mask, and gasping for air, the Gorgon agent asks, wait, is that Deadpool? Shortbread jumps up yelling for her to wait, but then she's knocked out and Polyek tells her to hold on. He's seen Deadpool without his mask, and that's it. They thought Burns survived the fire, but instead Deadpool replaced him. Oh, this is good. Deadpool then jumps up, punching Polyak, yelling, I also have a healing factor that just caught up with the poison. Some of Polyak's men charge into the car and they open fire, and Deadpool then says, I know how to deal with them, snowmobile pills. He jumps out from his cover, running up, slamming a pill down one of the thugs' throats. A few seconds later, there's a loud spurt, and there sits a fully sized snowmobile sitting atop of the gunman. He then starts throwing more and more of the pills, which is the equivalent of punching someone with a giant snowmobile. The pill aimed for Polyek misses, and as it expands, it separates the link between the two cars. Deadpool tells him that he's sorry for getting a little too excited about snowmobiles, but sorry everyone! And on the other detached car, Deadpool notices that Dr. Dipson is staring right back at him. Deadpool begins to get back up, and then he's hit with a handful of needles in the neck. Polyak says that since this is Deadpool, they're going to need a large enough dose to knock out even Galactus. Deadpool's involvement changes things. Medusa X will want to see him. So Polyak picks up Deadpool's body, calling out to Shortbread, but Shortbread shows him the transactions going from Jace's bank and how they're about to go to his and tells him to go to hell. Deadpool reaches out one last time before finally passing out. Later, Deadpool wakes up in a fancy room and he sees a note on the table that tells him, welcome, 
make yourself comfortable and please join us, signed X. Deadpool gets dressed in his old mask, stating that it feels good to be himself again. Now let's go see what all of this is about. As he walks out, he sees a giant monitor stating, welcome to Gorgon. In front of him is a stack of chimichangas, and well, Deadpool just can't help himself, and he has to have at least one. And while he eats, Gorgon's recruitment video plays, and Medusa X tells him, welcome to the beautiful Greece, land of legend and mystery. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Gorgon recognizes your ability as a skilled and valuable asset to their team with principles that mirror those of the original founder, Medusa. Thousands of years ago, Medusa was a beautiful woman wronged by the gods and cursed with a crown of snakes and a gaze that would turn men into stone. There are many stories, but one less told is her formation of a secret society, an organization dedicated to striking back against the unjust gods. Here at Gorgon, we fight to bring back the unjust power. And we know that you'll like it here. You're here because Gorgon believes that you're ready to join the battle, won't you? As the door opens up, Deadpool walks in, telling them that he thought that they were bad guys, but this all sounds very reasonable. Before he could finish his sentence, he's grabbed by the neck and he slowly begins to turn to stone. Medusa X lets go, telling him that he isn't invulnerable as advertised. Too bad. And Poliak asks if they were really going to recruit him. Deadpool's nothing more than an idiot. It's at that moment that Poliak is punched from behind by a slowly reverting Deadpool as he shouts that he may be an idiot, but idiots can be good killers. Medusa X tells him to stop, but Deadpool yells that it was a nice pitch, but statue face here is making a career out of pissing me off. Oh, and the woman back here? Don't know, but she sucks too. Goodbye. Medusa grabs Deadpool by the hand, telling him to wait. And Deadpool says that the whole rock skin thing really isn't gonna stop him. The healing factor took care of that. She crushes his hand, telling him that it may be so, but how quickly can it recover from nothing? What would happen if he was turned completely into stone and then crushed? Deadpool pulls back his arm, telling her, that is untested. And Medusa X goes on telling him, then we're going to try this again. For now, let's go to the solarium. As the group leaves, Deadpool whispers to Poliak, asking what happened to him. Did he trip and fall into Medusa? Or maybe Poliak says that he made a mistake and was punished with stone. And Deadpool nods, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does it make you mad that someone like me is far less affected by the same power? Poliak turns back, yelling for him to shut up, and Medusa X stops him, stating that that will be enough. So Deadpool then waves his baby hand, telling them, look, even the smashed part is growing back. Once everyone has a seat, Medusa X explains that Arya and Poliak are part of something bigger than themselves. They all have a mutual interest in Dr. Chip Dipson. Now, does he know exactly what the good doctor was working on? Deadpool says the only thing that he was told is that Dipson was working on something that they wanted. And Medusa X tells him that that is actually something ARC Director Blank wants as well. They're trying to keep it out of his hands. Medusa X presses down on the table and soon a projection appears. Medusa X explains that Dipson found another dimension known as Paradox Space. It is a parallel universe that does not obey many of the rules that their reality does. He found it by digging out an impossibly large rock, a protolith. Can God create a rock so heavy that he cannot even lift? That is a paradoxical question, not actually about gods or rocks, but about nature and creation. The rock can and must not exist. Dipson is carrying around just the tip of the protolith, leaving the rest of the impossibly large mass in Paradox Space. The tip of their space is connected to the rest of Paradox Space, which gives him a means to tear open a larger hole between the two dimensions. To gaze into the space invites madness. Arc Director Blank wants to do that so he can move his RMA out of secrecy, destroying his superiors and granting his agency legitimacy he desperately needs. It is that kind of power-hungry madman he'd be leaving if he was to join them. Deadpool can join Gorgon and stop the secret agency from also gaining this unlimited power. Plus, they'll pay him. Deadpool says that that is a lot to take in, and Medusa X gets up stating, of course, we'll give you time to think it over. Until then, but before they could finish, there's a loud neigh, and little Klopples runs up with Medusa X picking him up, stating, who's my pretty horse? Deadpool gets up telling her, I'm convinced. But first, we have to disable the GPS tracker that's in the watch that Arya took. She holds out her wrist, asking how, and Deadpool tells her that they have to turn the dial 45 degrees to the left and 90 to the right, and then 180 to the left. Arya begins to turn the dial, and when she finishes, the watch turns into a spinning blade that cuts off her hand. Medusa X shouts, asking what is the meaning of this, and Deadpool snatches the watch, stating, I'm not the only one losing a hand today. You guys aren't the good guys. You're horse thieves. You stole a horse from a family that loved him and was willing to pay a lot of money to me to get him back. So I'm gone. 
He fires a rocket into the ceiling, and Medusa X reaches out, telling him, Without the ability to fly, you're going to be nothing more than a pile of pebbles. Deadpool springs into the air, asking, Do rocket jumps count? Now to figure out. And that's when he realizes that he's now falling out of the Gorgon sky base. He isn't in Greece. As Deadpool is falling to the ground, he throws out a snowmobile pill and makes a call to Shortbread. She answers, asking what does he want, and Deadpool tells her, Look, I didn't know Jace was a secret agent. She asks why he would just have them think that he was Jace, the secret agent. She was beginning to like him, just never mind. Deadpool says that he's escaping Gorgon custody and could really use some help. There are these guys on ski shooting at him, and it kind of hurts. As the gas tank is shot out, Shortbread says that she's going to end the call. Hope to never see him again. Deadpool leaps off of the snowmobile to deal with the gunman, yelling, Wait! 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 I can help you! Just let me prove that I'm a good guy! And Shortbread sighs, stating that she will forward the lead on Dips into his watch. She still never wants to see him again. He lied! Shortbread hangs up, and Deadpool grabs one of the gunmen and then uses his arm to shoot the others, asking, You're just jealous and you don't want the others to share me. The gunmen struggle, shouting, No! And Deadpool asks, what is that? Your love is tainted? The only way to handle these powerful emotions is to shoot yourself. The man yells that he isn't saying any of that, and Deadpool forces the man to pull the trigger as they both go crashing into the ski lodge. The next day in Argentina, now that Deadpool's free, Dipson travels by bus with a piece of the protolith trying to hide it. But with so much running, he hasn't exactly gotten much sleep, and he begins to doze off. The protolith is the object that both the secret agency and Gorgon are after in our story. When he wakes up, he sees that the bus is empty. He gets up telling the bus driver that he thinks he missed his stop. So Deadpool turns back, telling him, Not at all! We just have a new stop to get to. Now, about that protolith. It's a piece of rock that leads to another dimension, right? If you aren't careful, you could tear a hole into that dimension! And if anyone was going to look into that tear, they'd go crazy, right? Dipson opens the box, telling him that, yes, that is correct. He'd be happy to show him. Deadpool tells him, That's quite all right. I'm just here to make sure that it ends up in the right hands, that's all. Dipson pulls the protolith out of the box, holding it in front of Deadpool's face, shouting, Take a good hard look! Deadpool stares at the stone. His eyes go wide, and he says, That doesn't make any sense at all. There are so many things going on. Gorgon is everywhere. Shortbread is Deadpool. And all everyone can state is ba, ba, and bo. Dipson makes a run for it, while Deadpool's mind explodes before he gets too far. But before he gets too far, the bus pulls up next to him. Deadpool opens up the doors, telling him, Hello again! Deadpool Healy Factor fixed the broke brain. Also, that little hole in reality doesn't seem to be permanent either. Come on, dude! Aren't you tired of running? The good guys found you. There's this great spot across the border we can get you to. So, a short while later, across the border at a place that serves chimichangas, Dipson says that he wasn't expecting them to be handcuffed. Deadpool tells him that he'll get used to it. Can't have him running off again! <laughs> anyway, I need to call HQ so that they can come get us. So Deadpool sends out the signal that he's got the protolith and he's ready for extraction. But just as he does, everyone in the restaurant cocks their guns, pointing them at Deadpool. He says, right, so we were expected. After being taken into the back, ARC Director Blank walks into the room with the protolith, telling Deadpool that they will talk about his deception later. But for now, he has to thank him for delivering the gift. With it, they can finally reveal themselves to the larger US government. No more black budget. No one's to deny the efficiency of their organization with something as powerful as... Blank is then kicked by the big boot of Deadpool as he says, That's gonna be a big nope. I know the corrupted by power speech, and that was it. You aren't gonna go full supervillain here, Mr. Blank. And that's when Deadpool notices that Blank's face mask is on the ground. The man says that it seems that he was finally discovered. His name is Burns. Jace Burns. Jace explains that it all started six months ago when two Gorgon hitmen were sent in to kill him. They found out where he lived and one day Blank came over and the hitmen attacked. He managed to kill them, but they killed Blank in the process. So to make things look normal, he had a real life mask of Blank made and he started to act like him. And that meant trying to solve the agency's budget problem. But Gorgon actually made their presence known earlier in the months. And when investigating Gorgon, he stumbled upon an operation that Gorgon was doing to steal a horse. Deadpool says, wait, so you put the hit on yourself? And Jace tells him, that is correct. I'd use the cover to continue acting as blank while things sorted themselves out. That's when Shortbread walks in looking at Jace asking if it's really him. Jace tells her that yes, the real him. Did you miss me that badly? 
Shortbridge shouts no. She was just almost feeling conflicted about when Deadpool was actually being nice to her. They tried to recruit him, but now? But before anyone could react, both Jace and Deadpool are shot with Trank guns. Deadpool a few more than normal though. So a little bit later at Death's Gate Island, Deadpool's looking around asking, wait, did this place blow up? Medusa X tells him no. They made it appear as if it was destroyed so that Gorgon could claim it. The Death's Gate portal was crucial to the finale to their millennia long plan. The protolith is the first rock. All creation starts with this holy graphite. It's the tip of God's pencil. Deadpool laughs, asking, wait, what? Shortbread says that Gorgon is dedicated to stripping away power from the unworthy, like Burns, the Arc Director, and their whole stupid organization. But nothing changes. Reality itself is just unjust. They deem its author unqualified, and they're here to revoke his pencil. They stand above a portal to anywhere, and they will deploy this tool swiftly across the world, redrawing it in their vision. Deadpool thinks to himself, huh, a cosmic pencil. As Shortbread goes on, Jace wakes up whispering to Deadpool that he has a plan to get them out of here. Keep Shortbread distracted while he cuts off the cuffs. After that, he'll strangle him with a diamond wire so that they think that he is on their side. Once it's done, he'll shoot him with enough bullets, but because he can't die, Deadpool jumps up cracking all of his bones and freeing himself, shouting, Jace here wants to ruin everything! And Jace tries to tell everyone that it's totally not true, but Polyak asks why would he share that? Deadpool says, because Jace has been playing him the whole time, and he's kind of over it. Gorgon's plan might be insane, but they were at least nice to him. He forever has cancer, and he lives in a crappy apartment. He might as well see how this all shakes out. Shortbread hugs Deadpool, telling him, Welcome to Gorgon, Wade. Medusa X then calls out that it's beginning. The protolith is entering their dimension. Soon it will fall upon New York City and... And... Polyak yells, Wait! The protolith is coming out too fast! What is happening? Something is interfering with the controls. Shortbread reaches for her phone to activate the universal access device and it's gone. But Deadpool is conveniently nearby whistling, stating, I lied, as he taps on Shortbread's phone. Once he finishes, he shouts, open up. And as the tear into the dimension rips wide open, the protolith turns into a giant pencil and everyone quickly shields their eyes. Deadpool, however, jumps onto the pencil and Shortbread asks, what is he doing? Deadpool tells her that he just thought that he'd let this source of all terror and wonder and love know that he dropped his, dropped his, bleh, almost went crazy with all the normies. I'm gonna try and tell this guy that he dropped his pencil. Hey God, the great cosmic God then asks, is that Wade? Deadpool tells him, yeah, bad guys are gonna steal your pencil and rewrite the earth like it was Daffy Duck running amok. God reaches over grabbing the pencil telling him, thanks. Never really know how reality will manifest when it's your story. What is this, some sort of James Bond thing with an Indiana Jones ending? And Deadpool calls back telling him, It's just another Wednesday, big man! He hops off the cosmic pencil so that God may erase the dimensional portal and get to work taking care of the bad guys. Deadpool then closes the Death's Gate portal telling them that they should just shut it down because they're about to have a lot of bodies dropping in a second. He has been screwed by pretty much everyone here, so let's bring this to a wrap. Deadpool begins to shoot all of the goons, Arya, Polyak, not Sharpred right away, the one guy that had spent his entire life trying to make the plan work from the beginning, and then he makes a phone call to the government so that they can shut down the secret agency and actually let Dipson study the island because why not? He's a nerd. Now, back to Sharpred and... Shortbread flies off on a helicopter with Medusa X shouting that they aren't finished yet. And that's when a bullet shoots by breaking Medusa X's mask and Deadpool asks, so who the hell are you anyway? The man inside of the mask rubs his face, stating, Hey Wade, yeah, it's me. Deadpool then asks if that is the Grey Gargoyle, and what is he doing running around in a weirdo doomsday cult? Gargoyle tells him that they put an ad out. Needed someone with stone powers. It's a living, right? So, with all of that resolved, one week later, out on the farm, a man sits on his sofa, stating that he still misses the little guy. Just then, there's a knock, and as the man opens up, Kloppels runs in name, off in the distance. A car speeds off, and Imp says that that was nice. Freelancing with him is nice! And Deadpool tells him that technically, the hit their old pal Jace put on himself is still open. And Imp yells, yes please! And there you have it, Deadpool's secret agent full story. Now every Monday we bring you a full story, which is a compilation of all of the videos here on the channel. But stick around because we tell you Batman stories, Red Hood stories, more Deadpool, more Spider-Man, all kinds of stuff to keep you occupied while there's nothing superhero related coming out in the big wide web out there. 
please consider subscribing. Please consider hitting that like button. And I'll see you next time right here.